from Stockholm, Sweden, I'm presenting myself, Peter Keilinger, your host, featuring guests from around the world in interesting conversations and stories. It's really delight and honor to introduce Katriona Smith, whom I've had the privilege to work with in a couple of productions at the Stuttgart State Opera 20 years ago. Katriona has been the leading soprano in Stuttgart since 1991 and was named Kammersängerin of the Stuttgart State Opera in the year of 2003. Personally, I regard her as one of the great sopranos of our generation and I wonder what her secret is, what has made her such a good singer and how she keeps her voice in shape. <laughs> Hi Peter, I'm very well, thank you. How are you in Sweden? It's cold, it's, it's minus seven degrees Celsius and lots yes. of snow. But it keeps me fit. I have to shuffle snow. <laughs> <laughs> Shuffling. <laughs> yeah, we've been really cold as well, but we're, now it's spring. Is it? Great. Yes. So, so um, it's just, it's been like minus 10 degrees. And this week the sun has come out and it's like, it's going to be 17 degrees, like spring day. So it's quite incredible how it just changes. I think it's like the weather is changing now, like the opera scene. I see. <laughs> do, do, do you have any productions coming up or, 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 or do you just sit at home and, or, or, or are you practicing at home? What do you do? Well, I am, I'm doing some practice at home, but I've been very lucky that I can still go into theatre to practice. And... Um, my position now as a sort of sort of elder stateswoman of the theater here in Stuttgart is that I am now mentor of the opera studio. So I get to do some work with all the young singers, which is great. And I have to say over the last few weeks, it's kind of been a lifesaver because I've been able to go into the theater. And of course, with all the social distancing measures and everything, I've been able to go in and do some work with them and listen to listen to people singing which has been such a joy because we've missed that listening to live uh, live music so I've been lucky in that way uh, that I've been able to go in and do some work and also that's inspired me to keep myself fit and keep my voice in good condition and keep practicing um, because sometimes you know it's very hard to be disciplined about those things and I'm not the best person at that, but I've been really trying because we have got productions coming up. Very limited this season, but um, we have um, a production of a scenic production of uh, Johannes Passion coming up, a concert version of Ariadne of Naxos, and then the one that I'm involved in, which will be hopefully in May, is um, a piece called Judita Triumphus, and it's a Vivaldi very, very rarely performed. And we've actually done all the rehearsals of it. Last year, we got up to the last dress rehearsal and then lockdown came into being and the, everything was canceled. So we did all the, perform, you know, all the preparations, all the work for that. And then it was just kind of like, stop, we can't do it. So it was kind of like, you were on a high, ready to go. And then you just went, you know, cr crashing down, you know, with a bump, we landed to earth. So uh, the principle is that we know what we're doing, but it's been a year. And by the time we get to May, it will be over a year. So, and it's difficult. Vivaldi is difficult to sing. I have a lot of coloratura to put in and it's tricky. And I'm not the youngest anymore. So all these things are like, okay, I have to practice. I have to practice. So I'm very glad I've kind of kept myself going, but that will be the next one that I'm involved in. And basically then our season will be rounded off with a few, um, I think, live streaming events. We've got an opera program online. You can check into the Opera Stuttgart website or at in YouTube, and you can look at Opera Totsk 
Corona, which, you know, opera despite of Corona, we've put a few things online and now we're going to start that program going again. So with those things, I'm keeping myself busy. And then the opera studio, because they're like counted as um, a study period, they're allowed to keep working. So I'm also going to be involved with them, which is which is great. They've got a lot of nice projects coming up, like recording a CD um, and doing also doing scenes and putting them online and um, and then hopefully also the online things are going to take and put them to a concert version for limited number of people, you know, however we'll work that out. But um, I don't have to, to do that, thank goodness. I just have to do what I'm told and then be there and perform when necessary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great that you're helping young singers. Uh... Yes. And I'm really enjoying it. I've been doing it for the last couple of years, but this year seems to have sort of cemented, um, you know, it's been more part of my life, I think, because of the whole situation. Um, so I've really enjoyed that. And I've over the years, I've, I have done a little bit of teaching privately, and I've been able to go to different places and do masterclasses and work with, um, with singers, with young singers. I mean, the main one has been in the far east of Russia, so, um, which is quite bizarre because I've been over the last 15 years, five times to Vladivostok in the far East in Siberia. So it's been wonderful. And I've been doing like a mixture of performances and working with students there. So that sort of like prepared me for, you know, my next kind of step into my next sort of like musical journey. That's great. I love that. I think it's perfect. I, yeah. So, so I was thinking about, you know, I know a couple of opera singers and some of them are kind of egocentric, you know, like having pictures on the walls of, with themselves or, 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 but I had always the impression that you're not that kind of, of a person. You're not so egocentric. Yeah. Do, do you have, do you have think... pictures of, of yourself at home? on the wall um well peter i'm going to like you're right but i'm going to disappoint you slightly i only have a one picture of me in the cellar <laughs> sort of like where we store all the you know all the garden equipment and extra food that we don't need there's a picture and it's like a poster of of being in russia because i like the fact that my name was all in russian and uh and yes yeah, so you're right i don't really have anything in the proper house of me like performing or anything because I don't really want to look at myself <laughs> the mirror is fine the mirror is plenty I do have like a lot of pictures and a lot of um programs from performances that I've done over the years and they've all been in a box so and when I first came here after the first couple of years in Germany friends of mine um they gave me a present and it was a photograph album and it had my first performances like the Rigoletto that we did um, years ago, you remember. And um, things like that were put in, but maybe like six pages. And then it was like, now please carry on yourself. So this album sat in the cellar room for about 20 years and not been touched. And I looked at it a few times over the years and thought, I must do that. I must just fill up that. I've got so many photos and nice memories. So I think like two years ago, a year and a half ago, I just thought I've got a month now. Where I'm not doing very much. I'm going to get everything together. So I filled up all those books and I had such a lovely time, you know, looking at all the colleagues that I've worked with over the years, filling up the books, putting in like bits of the program and then looking at everything and thinking, what is all this rubbish? I do not need this out. So I, I threw out a lot. So it was like a cleansing. You know, you know, Marie Kondo, you know, the Japanese, she cleans your house and everything. I did all that. And I was like, thank you. Arigato kazamasu. Thank you very much. I've had that now. Those things are gone in my life. I've got them all in a little condensed thing. So that's my sort of outlook on, on things. And I, I'm kind of up to date because now that I did it, I thought, oh, this is quite nice to have. 
who knows who will want to look at it you know when I'm not here anymore I don't know but it was a nice memory to have so that's my little look back on um on all the years I've been over in Germany I think I have the same situation here at my home I have a little box with old programs so I think it's a good strategy not to have too yes. much going on and with I yourself think, I think maybe that maybe also like we have other things going on in our lives like the theatre of course is a huge part and music and singing is, has been a, a tremendously huge part of my life but I have a family I have things here that I do I like to look at different things I love to travel and uh, so I don't need to see myself <laughs> But how, when when did you get interested in opera and, and, and music? Did, did, are, um, are your parents musicians or, or, or? No, no, my parents are not musicians, but they both like music. Um, my father was in the army, so we traveled quite a bit. I was actually born in Germany. So coming back to Germany was not a big deal for me because I knew what Germany was like. Um, so it was like lovely for me to come back when I actually decided I'd come and work here. But getting into it, they were not musical, but they always encouraged me to do music. Did I want piano lessons? And I just kind of said, yeah, why not? We always sang around the house. You know, there was always kind of music going on, but not that anybody did it properly. Um, and I was encouraged then at school. I think I was very lucky with my first music teachers when I was very, very small because they saw something, I think, in me and encouraged me just to sing, to play instruments and just to be involved in, in the life of, you know, musical life. And so I think I was lucky in that point. And when I came to leaving school, I was really like a very terrible student or all my old school friends will, will will verify this I was like the worst in the class I used to disrupt chemistry uh, experiments and uh, you know, I was very naughty <laughs> and um, who could believe that now I don't know but uh, I had this music going on and music and sport I was very very sporty and I love sport and I love music so for me it was between those two things what can I take further and I think I was encouraged to go in the music direction by my last uh, music teacher at school. And she said, just try it and see how you get on, go and sing for some people. And which I did, I had no notion of what I was doing really. And I got into music college at quite a young age, too young. And um, I did quite a lot of years, four years. I did a preliminary year and then I did a degree, degree course in singing as such as you do. And um, got taken on into the opera studio without really thinking the opera school at that time in Glasgow, without really thinking, do I want to do opera? It was just sort of like that was a thing to do if you got in. And I, it was sort of like I just kind of fell into it and got taken up for various things. I was very lucky I got invited to go to Canada for a year's study and, um, and then that led to going over to Banff to the summer school where we did some Britain operas. And so then it just sort of was like, oh yeah, I like this, this is good. And I also could like, I could also like act and do things on the stage, which I loved and I'd never really thought I was very good at it, but obviously I kind of just went for it and there was something there. So I think for me, that was like a discovery. Yes, I can do this, I can combine both things. And when I left Canada, that was the tricky time because I remember somebody saying to me, why don't you go to Germany? And, and somebody else said, oh no, don't rush it, don't rush it, you know, go back to UK and do some things. And I went back to UK, but there was nothing. It was very, very hard to get into the, to get a job, basically. I did a lot of chorus work. I did a lot of extra um, work, singing in concerts and, um, you know, earning not very much money and luckily I did a project that of course you didn't get paid for it was a youth opera project British youth opera and I was singing Pamina and just by chance the new intendant in for Stuttgart was watching one night she'd been invited and um, there was pure chance and she said I really like her and she stuck by me I went through all sorts of different things after that um, to have auditions for various people in different parts of the country. 
And eventually then I got the job in Stuttgart and then that, that's just been my life basically. But she was a very important part of my life because when I came to Stuttgart, I had no experience, very young, um, didn't quite really know where I fitted in in the whole system in another country, which is hard to get to grips with when you're young. You, you know about that. It's not so easy sometimes. And she really kept me on the straight and narrow you know, giving me the right roles to do, not giving me too much straight away, building up very slowly. So I'm always very grateful to her. I see. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean about the feeling in Germany in the, fir the first year, the first two years, I guess, kind of. Yes, because I mean, the first two years, I think I was so used, I'd been living in London. And I've been working in Harrods in the record department, <laughs> giving all my knowledge or, or lack of knowledge. And um, I'm doing extra work as, as a singer and then trying to do auditions and, you know, saying I was sick at work when I was going off to do an audition. I think they copped on pretty soon that, you know, what I was up to. Um, and uh, so when I came here and I was used to that whole life of when you finish work or when you finish a show, we just went to the pub and had a drink. And when I came here, you did a rehearsal. And everyone was very nice and pleasant. And then they just said, bye, see you tomorrow. Because they had families. And, and I was like, when I first came, there was only a few of us that were new at that time. And we weren't always at the same place at the same time. So we didn't get to know each other until a few months later. Um, so the first little while, it took me a long time to get used to how the rhythm was here how the work was and of course at that time we didn't have opera studios as such you were just thrown straight in at the deep end singing an amazing amount of small roles but a lot and just being given two week rehearsal time and you're on and that was for me quite daunting like one piece I can't remember what it was that the cup to part or something like that and the guy the 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 regie assistant just said to me or just go and dance, just do, do, go and do some ballet over there in the corner. I was like, well, I can't, I've never done any ballet. <laughs> or just moves. I ended up doing Scottish country dancing in the corner of the stage. <laughs> I thought all these poor people coming to see, come to see something highbrow, they're not going to get it from me. But anyway, yes, it was tricky to start off with, but then you find your place and you settle and you get to know people. And then it was, became my family. Nice. Do, do you have... Uh, any particular singing teachers to be great, grateful for? I do, yes. Um, I mean, I think all of them. I've, I've had a few different teachers and, you know, my first singing teacher um, was um, at the academy in, in Glasgow. And she was very much, she didn't have that much teaching experience, which was probably very good for me because I was very young and I just didn't need anybody to sort of wreck anything. I just needed to sing. So basically we just did loads of exercise. I remember my first exam, I had to sing a Vakai study because I wasn't ready. She said, you're not ready to sing anything. And I was like, what am I doing at music college? But actually now I look back on it, I was like, yeah, she was right. So in that way, she was very, very good at, at just keeping you very grounded and balanced. I mean, she was very, a very glamorous woman. And I used to appear in my jeans and, you know, sweatshirts. And she would say, oh, Katronius, you can't, you just can't be a singer like that. Maybe you're not, maybe you're not a performer. And I always thought about that. And I said, yeah, but when I do something, then I will dress accordingly. So when I did a competition, I would look very smart. And she was like, yes, very good, very good. Yes, I see now, okay, I will push you in that way. Because I think it's quite nice to keep your own identity. And I worked with somebody in London as well, who was very good at that time. But I, then I, she was lovely and she was very good because I needed to keep that bridge of when you're, when you've stopped working, or stopped studying and you're going into work. So she was very good in that way. And then in between, I worked with a singing teacher in Canada. And she was also very great because she was like really well known for modern music. And she really, all the people that she worked with, their voices were like so in focus, like really, you know, really there. 
So uh, I learned a lot from her as well. So I'm, I'm thankful, thankful to all of them. But I was never somebody that said, I have to see my teacher every week. And I can't move without my teacher. So I was always very independent, which I think is also important. You need to check in with teachers and you need to keep working and then work with coaches and, you know, have that connection. But I think you also have to know, okay, I can go out and do it by myself. So I think I was always a little bit like that, which is sometimes I see that people, they need, they're too needy. They need to have this connection with the teacher constantly. And I think you have to know at a time when to break a little bit away, but keep, but keeping the connection, keeping topped up, keeping your voice in good order, keeping healthy, but also the ability to take advice from different areas. So a lot of people will tell you different things and it can be mind blowing, it can be too much. But then if you know, okay, that really worked for me, I'm gonna take that and use it. So it's always a learning curve and it still is. It is. It's still yeah. like yeah. You know, learning things. And I was like, why did I not know that when I was, you know, in my late twenties, early thirties. And now I think, oh, that would have been easier if I paid attention. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting to see how, how that develops. You're always depending on yourself. I mean, in any, if you, if you're going to, whatever you're going to learn to, to, to ski, skiing or whatever, singing or, doesn't matter what you're what you're doing it, you have you have to learn it yourself <laughs> so do you I have it yeah. Yeah. yeah do you have any any i was thinking about your voice and and listen I've, i've been listening to you more more now this this week or last week than before the the first of all i i always liked your voice and your singing and and you as a stage person But I realized that your voice is actually, you, you, you could do anything, I guess. I mean, you, you, you've been singing, you're a lyric dramatic soprano. And you've been singing Susanna and, and you know, now Monteverdi Viva. It's more flexible now than it was. When I first started, it was very much, you were like the young soubrette, uh, coloratura soprano, and you stayed in that fach. But, I mean, it's a bit unrealistic because you go through different phases in your life you come you're very young you're singing that repertoire as, as i'm speaking as a soprano so i'm not sure how it works with other voices but for a soprano there's so much there's so many different facts that you can go through basically but you're also a, a woman you're changing all the time um you have a, you have a family you have children your body changes so your voice changes You change with that life. Now I'm at the other end of the spectrum, you know, menopausal, crazy woman. Your voice changes again. So we're changing all the time. And I'm not sure. I, I'm, I think it's more complex, perhaps, for a woman's voice. I'm not sure how it works with, with a man because I've never really talked about that. And no. that, that would be interesting to explore whether, you know, I know, obviously, you men also go through different changes and your voice gets more mature and then you settle into you know different roles but um i think it's just such for a woman it's such dramatic changes that happen to your body that i think of course that's going to affect your voice so i've always been very um open to trying different things And um, I think I've kind of been lucky because I've been able to do it, but I've always said, okay, if you want me to sing that role, I have to sing it in my voice. I have to do it in my way. I'm not going to try and be a dramatic soprano because I'm not. So if you want me to do this role that is a really big orchestration, there has to be some way to get past it. Because I think the trend now in opera is a little bit too... Um, cast the roles a bit lighter than than it used to be i mean you used to have to be dramatic soprano you would have to have the big voice and now it seems there's a little bit of of leeway in as it to you know who gets cast in these roles whether that's right or wrong i think that's just maybe the way that things have evolved over the years and how i don't think there's so many big dramatic voices out there anymore i think it's kind of changed Um, but perhaps somebody else will say something else and prove me wrong. So I've been, I have mixed. And then someone said, well, how can you sing that? And then go back and sing something like Vivaldi or something. It's not easy. I have to know then how to manage my <clears throat> timetable, excuse me, my timetable so that I'm not singing 
stupid, you know, ridiculously different, not stupid, ridiculously different um, roles at the same time. Yes. Which can be tricky in Germany because if you're attached to a house, you're expected to, you know, just do the roles, the roles that you're given all at one time. So um, you have to be kind of like say, no, I don't think I can do that at this time. So I think you have to be able to manage yourself very well. But um, yeah, I, I kind of enjoyed going into slightly different rep repertoire than was expected of me maybe at the time because it was challenging. Do you have a favorite composer? You know, Peter, I, re I don't really actually. To be honest, I mean, I mean, I love singing Mozart, of course, but everyone's going to say that, but it is, it's true, it's so healthy for your voice, and I love that. I love French repertoire, um, you know, I'd be happy to sing more French repertoire, and unfortunately, we don't do so much, but I, I love that. But um, I just, I'm, I'm very much also with music that I listen to at home, and I've got a very wide, broad spectrum of tastes, and I enjoy listening to a lot of you know, new things that are out there. I mean, I'm not talking now just purely about classical music, but you know, also like rock music, pop music. I enjoy listening to what's new. I don't always get it because I think I am getting a bit old and long in the tooth for some of the things. <laughs> but um, I have a really wide, I, you know, I love Baroque music. I love listening to that. I love singing it if I get the chance, but I, then I also love to delve into something else, um, you know, that's also challenging like in, you know, a lot of the German repertoire is fantastic to sing. But I think if you pushed me, then I would say French is my favorite. What about rehearsals? Do you like them? I do like rehearsals, but I love the time when, you know, when you first told, do you want to sing this role? And you go, oh yeah, well, have a look at it. And you get the score out and you go through it. I love that moment of just going through, oh yeah, this is really nice. I think I can sing that. Um, marking your score and just, you know, laying everything out and just having a look at it. I love that. And then the excited, the thing is that you kind of like get carried away and oh, how would I do this? And I try not to think too much about how I would do a role because you always get to the, um, the talk before the opera production starts and it's completely different from what you had thought. So um, I try not to have too many ideas about how I would do a role because I've done that before and then it's just been completely different. I've just had to say, okay, I can't do it like that. But um, I love that beginning process when, you know, the ideas are coming out and then they say, how would you like to, you know, how would this work? And, and then I get my own little ideas. I love starting out. And, and then there's like this period in the middle when I'm just like, okay, let's just do it, let's do it, let's do it. And I get a little bit like, okay, that's, that's enough now. I want to just get out and perform. But, and then this, I don't, what I don't like is I don't like the end rehearsals. The, you know, the very end of the production when you're doing the dress rehearsals and all those things and everybody's throwing all these different things and there's so much pressure going around. I always find that difficult. And I find that I'm more nervous. So I'm really happy then when the show starts and you can just get on with it. And what's lovely as well is that for every piece that you're in, you always meet new people. So you're always with a different group and sometimes you gel more than others, but mostly I've, I've been really lucky actually. I've always been involved in, or mostly been involved in pieces that I've just had such a great time with a group of colleagues that I always look forward to that. Who's gonna be in it? And oh, I really would like to get to know that person better. And of course, when you're working six, seven weeks together, you do get to know people quite well. And I love that, yeah. you know, the social aspect as well, I think is really important. Because I think if you just think about work all the time or just think about your voice all the time, oh, you'd be very precious. So I think the social aspect of it is really important to have a balance in your life. I'm going to watch and listen to uh, a recording from Stuttgart Staatsoper, a recent recording of Purcell's music for a while. Let's, let's see.
Yes, yeah, so the music from us is quite nice. I mean, it's, it was done in the last lockdown. So I've got lockdown hair and I'm older looking and everything, but it's quite nice. I quite liked it. <laughs> I wonder if you have any advices for young singers. Yes, and my, my one thing would, would be for young singers is to, to have patience. Don't try and, don't try and do everything at once. Trust in the fact that you will that you grow and you grow into these roles and you have to take everything that comes to you, take even the smallest role and just like create something with it and then progress from there. Because I don't think I knew that when I was young. I was just like, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. And I was hopping from one thing to the next without actually thinking, yes, I'm going to enjoy this. It's so hard to just do things and not enjoy them. I think I learned that much later, but that's maybe this process of maturing and everything that you do learn to enjoy things a little bit later on. Also a thing like, it's just like, try and be nice to people because they'll be nice to you. Yeah. I, you know, we've been through, we've met lots of people and everybody has a different way. And usually it's their insecurities and they'll say something. And I think, God, did that person just say that? That's so rude. Like. How can they get away with that? And, uh, you know, I, I would never dare. I think maybe that's my, my Britishness um, in me, that I would never dare say anything untoward. But now that I'm a little bit older, like I think, well, okay, I think I can say these things now and I won't get into trouble. Okay. But I will always say them in a very diplomatic yeah. and a pleasant way. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's my mantra for, for, for life. Well... Catriona, it has been my pleasure to have you here. I wish you all the best and uh, I hope we'll see each other again sometime in the future. Bye! But I think that's it. Yeah. Otherwise I've talked forever. <laughs>